So a lot's happened in the past week, and I have a lot to catch you guys up on. First of all, my new computer came in. I have to block 7020. I got 25 laptop batteries. I think it's 25, maybe 26 or even 27. Either way, I paid for 25 batteries and didn't really count them too much. I got the trunk made, which you guys have already seen. And I have the BMS installed on my tricycle battery. So I don't have to worry about ever taking the battery out. It's just plug and play. I charge it and I ride it. Don't have to worry about it. Let's first start off by showing the BMS. So my tricycle is now on version 1.4. Previously, I had this charger, and whenever I wanted to charge it, I would disconnect the battery from the, from the motor controller and connect the battery up to the charger, turn it on, and then whenever I wanted to drive it, I would disconnect it from the charger and connect it up to the motor controller. Well, I added some splicing cables, so now I can charge it and drive it without ever having to disconnect any wires, so it's all self-contained. Then, what I did was I bought this BMS board, and it was, about, it was, I think, $25, and it came with this cable on it. This cable goes into these 9-pin D-sub connectors, which I'm actually glad I ended up using them now, because before, I was kind of like, oh, great, I, I've already started using them, so I guess i got to make all my batteries using those. But now, it's like, it's really easy to find that connector, so that was a good, good idea, actually. So, we have these going through here, and I've also had to upgrade the battery to 52 volts. So, this is no longer a 48 volt system. It has an extra 12 cell, 4 volt, 24 amp hour battery. So, it brings the voltage up to 52 volts. And it's actually a little bit noticeable. I have an extra like 2 miles an hour on my top speed. It goes up to like 37 or 39 miles an hour now. That's under no load, like if I just pick up the front. Now, I've had a lot of issues with this BMS because. It doesn't bring all the voltages up to 4.2 or even 4.1. Like the middle one goes to 4.09. Some of the later ones down here always goes to 3.98. So, oh well. The people I bought it from were actually extremely nice and are sending me out another one. So we'll see if that goes okay. If not, it's fine like it is. I, it, it, it's not balanced, but it's consistently going to the same state of not being balanced. So... It will, it will keep the batteries getting from too unbalanced to where it like blows up or anything. It's just these won't be fully balanced. But that's fine with me. They, at least they all go out to their same, the same values it picks, even if they're wrong. I'm thinking the reason for that is because there's like a bunch of resistors in here. I think maybe they're just so out of whack that they are messing up the internal voltage sensing. But yeah, it's a very simple system now, and it's, it's so much easier. I don't have to worry about the batteries. I just plug this in when I get to work and I plug it in when I get here and the light turns red when it's charging turns green when it's not charging and just FYI this is the charger that came with the hub motor kit the cheap 2.5 amp 59 volt charger so I'm actually going to be using that after all I am kind of sad that I didn't get to use this one though because I was hoping to have this old meter and this old ceramic resistor on here but I can find another use for that this is a nice power supply later on I'm going to want to mount my trunk to my tricycle and that'll be pretty simple then i'm going to be wanting to make a range extender i have kind of ditched my my previous idea that i had for different drive modules what i was wanting to do before was i was wanting to have some kind of like bay where i could have a battery and i could pop it in and i could have multiple bays so i guess i could drive with only one battery but every battery that i added will give me like an extra 30 miles of range and i would just slowly keep making more of those batteries so i could build it up Unfortunately, though, it, it's a little bit difficult to do that, and I'd have to sacrifice space in my tricycle trunk area. So what I decided to do is I'm going to keep using this battery as my commuter battery. So I'll always have this battery connected, and I'll be making like a box that'll go in here to hold the battery along here and the motor controller. Now, whenever I want to go really far, I'll have a bigger battery that I'll drop into the trunk. That'll be my range extender, and that's what this is going to start being. All these batteries here. I paid $3 a battery. I got them from Weird Stuff Warehouse. They just have a skid full of these. And, yeah, I I hope I get at least like 30 or 40 good cells from that. But either way, it's a good deal. I also got some other stuff. I got a new pair of military combat boots. These are pretty much exactly like my other pair that my grandfather gave me. They were made in 1992. These are probably made around the same time. And they fit wonderfully. This will probably last me another 15 years or so. So now I have two pairs. The older pair are getting a little bit old, but these ones will last me quite a bit longer. It was definitely worth the $30 I paid for it on eBay. 
Also, I today I ran to Halted Electronics again. I picked up these for a dollar. Picked up this for 75 cents, a little LED display. And I finally found some rainbow ribbon cable. It's like two dollars for this, four feet of it. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't that? It's just, it's such a tasty color. I love that. So this trunk will be mod 1.5. And these batteries will probably be mod 1.6 for my electric tricycle. And I want to try to get some rear view mirrors on there pretty soon because I, I can definitely use them for looking behind me. But now let's get on to testing out the OptiTruck 7020. I really want to try this out. It's so cool. I love how this looks. And nice, it came with Windows 7. Best Windows so far. I am pretty happy with this computer. I'm almost done with transferring all my stuff over that I need, like all the little programs and all the files and stuff like that. I'm running the Final Fantasy XIV benchmark to get a good idea of how powerful it is. My Asus CM6850 running an NVIDIA GTX 560 Ti. That's my main editing and my main desktop back in Illinois. That got about 16,000 on the lowest setting. We'll see what this does. But remember, this doesn't have a good graphics card in it. It just has the onboard graphics. I've ripped apart some of the cells, and I've tested some. I've ripped apart, well, I've ripped apart like nine battery packs, and I've tested the cells in three battery packs. These ones are all dead. I'll see what I can do with them. But these ones are all good. Although these ones, I think they might be such low capacity that they might not be worth using them for my electric tricycle. Might use them for like a flashlight or something. But either way, I'm getting cells and it's pretty cheap. Now, I'm hoping to move away from my duct taped and soldered design and go for a 3D printed like rack container thingy. I, I, I made this 3D model in Blender today. I have a few issues with size on this, but whenever I get this figured out, I'm going to release the file so you guys can print your own too so yeah this is pretty good and I'm not, not even all the way through all the batteries oh we get the results 6164 that's not bad at all and normally I would go with an LCD screen but CRT monitors they have the lowest latency of compared to most LCDs because it's just so fast to get the video from there to here and even a few milliseconds of delay can mean a lot in playing video games and stuff like that so i'm probably going to stick with this not counting i like it and here's the insides of it so we have a pcie slot so i can hook up a nice short graphics card that'll be pretty good because even with my OptiPlex 320, I have a, a sizable thing, NVIDIA 400, uh, an NVIDIA GTX 400 something, I don't know. It has like a 500 megabytes of RAM. It's, it's pretty good. I have a nice i7 processor in there. We have a 500 gigabyte hard drive, and we have the CD drive. Unfortunately, I was kind of disappointed in this. They don't have a full SATA power connector. They have a full SATA cable going to the CD, but not a full SATA power connector. So what that means is I can't readily hook up my SSD as a secondary drive. Because what, usually I don't have any use for a CD drive most of the time. So I can just disconnect it, have my SSD sitting in here, and connect up the SSD as a secondary drive. But with this power cable, I can't do that. So temporarily, I'm going to reallocate 4 gigabytes of RAM as a RAM drive. And it'll actually be much faster than an SSD anyway. A RAM drive basically turns whatever amount of size of the RAM that you want into an, an actual drive that you can use. So I can save files on it, at least temporarily, and then it, it can back up the files onto the hard drive before I shut down the computer. But basically what I need is I need quick access to my video files while I'm editing. And really I'm only editing with maybe between 2 and 6 gigabytes of files, so I could easily just increase the size of the RAM disk to 6 gigabytes if I need, but for the most part, 4 gigabytes would be more than enough. And this comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM, so I have four, uh, 2 to 4 gigabytes left over, depending on how big I make the RAM disk. And that'd make it really easy to render the video quickly, and to view the video really well and with full motion while I'm editing it, because rendering with choppy video is so difficult. And in the long run, I may actually 
continue with my previous idea of not putting the SSD in here, but instead putting the SSD onto my laptop because my laptop is powerful enough to edit video. It's just that the hard drive isn't fast enough to access the 1080p video in real time while I'm editing it. So that makes it kind of difficult. But if I put the SSD in there, it'll work pr pretty good. Now I'm actually using this little adapter to use my 120, or no, I can't remember my 240 gigabyte SSD as basically a big flash drive. So I'm using that as a giant 240 gigabyte flash drive and copying all my video files over and I'm copying them onto this computer so I have a backup of all my stuff. So that's pretty good. So as you can see, I actually have a 4.4 gigabyte RAM disk, which I have as R for RAM. And so anytime I have my videos from my camera, I can import them into that RAM disk and then I can access them really quickly with Adobe Premiere and then when I'm rendering it, I can render it from there and back out of the RAM disk as long as I have no space on the RAM disk and it'll be very fast and I won't be slowed down by an SSD or even a hard drive and it can just go as fast as the processor can handle because the data bus between the processor and the RAM is pretty fast, about as fast as you can go on a computer. Well, I'd say that's pretty much it for now. I'm pretty tired and I got a lot of work to do with these cells. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya!